eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Volpe Basel Report. We are taping on, no on November 6th, the day after the elections. Uh, I want to get the homework done. You know you can find my column every week in the Yorktown News. And uh, just so you know, I batted 1,000 in my endorsements. I, uh, the county executive, the supervisor in Yorktown, and the uh, highway superintendent all won their races. And I didn't vote for anybody on the council, so I'm, that, you know, somebody had to win that, but I didn't make any endorsements. Now, I just want to let you know, uh, because I know you're all expecting politics, but I want to take my lead from Michael Savage and say, instead of talking politics, I'm going to talk to my guest, Dave Paganelli, Yorktown Councilman and Highway Superintendent-elect, about his favorite meatballs. Which it was, my favorite meatballs, yeah. Mario Batali. I, I mean, I can't believe, <laughs> I listen to Michael Savage, and everybody's talking about the issue of the day, and he talks about his Indian restaurant, and he and they're going to give him drive time. That's they're nice. going to give him drive time. Well, what somebody wants say don't give my opponent time on your dime yeah it, you know? it, it's amazing <laughs> anyway dave congratulations Thanks, Andy. thank you and, you know uh, happy to be here yes i'm happy that and you i'm were. happy that we won that we're here you know oh, i, well, I wouldn't want to be here if we now, didn't win <laughs> the no, first the first race you win because i want to get into all the races with you that's yes. why you're here we're going to discuss county executive and i want to discuss how kaplowitz could be the only Democrat in that so Republican sweep in Capitol. It still took Somers by 400. I want to get into your thinking of this, but first I want to compare the, see, the last race you ran, you were the biggest vote getter ever for the Yorktown Council, correct? Well, percentage. But Not the, the biggest vote getter. Terrence was the biggest vote getter. Okay. We had the largest percentage of votes. Okay. There was less of a turnout in that election. Okay, but what I want to ask you, I think this race, compares to your first race when you actually ran as a Democrat. And lost by 40 votes? Right, but I'm just saying, <laughs> I mean, they were close. You didn't know. It I was mean, close. I mean, w is there a comparison between those, this race and that first race you ran? Emotionally? Yes. Oh, yeah. Emotionally, um, you know, we, we, we have a tradition that, you know, our people that are support us and that go out and do lit drops and that go out and do blitzes, you know, we stay at my home. We don't... You know, we don't go out to a bar and we don't, you know, we don't want to revel. We're, we're serious. We want to see what the results are. And, you know, certainly we're very respectful to the support of the party, you know, but it's just our tradition. And let me tell you, when the first seven or eight districts are coming in, it was, we were up three, we were down 20. We were, I was just, oh my God. So it's going to be like, like that first race you ran. Worse. You... It's, this was the most nerve wracking race I've ever been in. Well, I got to ask you, sir, because I... You do this stuff at your house, everybody comes to your house, and you're watching these results, and you're in no contact from anybody down in White Plains. No. So you're just going what everybody else sees on their computer. Yeah. And there was a time you were tied. Dead that, tied. That had... Dead even. That oh, had, it was, that wasn't as bad as a, a, after a district came in, we were down 50. I didn't know you were down. For yeah, we were down at two different points. We were down. And even when we were up, when the first seven or eight districts were coming in, we were only up three, four votes. I mean, it was a very close election. And, you right. know, we, we, you know, fortunately, you know, it was 51 percent, 49 percent, 51, 49. And we were ahead. And then, you know, that held for about eight or nine districts. And then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, we, and I think it that, ended up 56. Robert, I'd love to know what that district that really came in and put you with you know, that margin. Of yeah, me too. We'll have to, we're going to have to look gonna at have that. We're going to have to look at the internals. But I want to ask you a question. You have run six elections. Yeah, you make me sound like you've been there for 100 years. No, but you've run six times. Because you, well, well, you had a run on the finish. I, yeah. You had a <laughs> primary. Every time you ran for office, yes. not only did you run for office, you had a primary for right. that. So city. we had three primaries and three generals. Yes. Right. Six elections. So in this election, more than any other, 
there were negative attacks in the primary and in the, la in the last minute. Yes. Uh, and I've always told you, don't worry about it. That means they feel you're a threat or else they wouldn't be going after you. But yes. do you think that... Uh, although I find consolation in that, it still doesn't make you feel but very I wanna well. Ask, but I want to ask you, though, do you think that because you have been to these doors six times, because you are very act, uh, proactive when you go door to door. Yes. So do you think that after seeing your face six times, talking to you six times, it negated these negative attacks because people felt they actually knew you? I think that, you know, it was interesting. I was talking to my wife about it, and we, you know, we had a business in town for a long time, and we, you know, we touched a lot of people's lives in a positive sense and then through the town board you know I think you know people have seen me as being relatively open-minded and effective and you know through our my TV show through being on your show so many times you know I think that everything the synergy of everything coming together offsets that and then we, we what we did was you know we didn't send out mailers we don't believe in that we don't believe in robocalls we we, we consider ourselves a bellwether of what people like and you know when Ten mailers come to my house in a day. My wife says, "Do you want to look at these?" I'm like, "No, throw them away. I don't care. I know, I know what the issues are, I and I know who I want to vote for." See, this I don't understand with candidates. They know what they don't like. Yes. Why would Yet they, they do it? Why would they do what yep. they? Why do they think because they don't like it, somebody's going to like it? Because you know what? It's that. I think it's in people's mind. It's it's either they enlist people to help them that only know that path. They don't, they're not open to another path, and they don't realize that it's about getting out, meeting people. It's about, I mean, we, we had such a great team of young people that were out there. My, you know, my daughters, their friends, <clears throat> you know, young people who were related distantly. And, you know, I think it's just people out there, if they're believers, when they meet someone, you know, we, hey, we didn't, everyone out there didn't vote for us. That was clear. You well, know, I told so. you that from the yes. beginning. Yeah. I always said, never worry about the people that ain't going to vote for you. Right. Not, you're not going to get them. Right. You're never going to. Don't waste any time trying uh, to convert them. What was always the biggest piece of advice I gave you that you kept quoting back to me? Yep. Never forget how people perceive you. Because yep. you and are you know what? When we when we were, when we were getting attacked, quantity. when we were getting you know these attack pieces done on us, you know personal attacks, and you know what? I wouldn't respond. I I sent a letter out saying that you know certainly. You know that we don't campaign this way. We speak on the issues. We, we hope that people trust in us and believe that we're the right person for the job. And you know, I use the word "we" a lot because, you know, even in my business, I would say to people, the people that work for me, when you when you go to a table, you know, it's not oh they don't do that or they don't offer that. It's we. It's it's always we. Well, you, you had know. a team that's been loyal to you. It has to be we. You could have never done this. Oh my God, no! I wouldn't have even attempted to do this without my team. You know, and then they kept me, you know what, they, they keep me in check when, you know, and then I call you when I'm mad and I see a lit drops being done. And, you know, when did I call you, you know, at 1130 at night and say, you know, you got to be kidding me. How can they be doing this to me? And you said, eh, don't, don't worry about it. People know you. They know. Well, I want to ask you, you went door to door <clears throat> after that negative attack. Was that, did that turn out to be true? How people. Yes. I had, I had so many people, particularly up in Jefferson Village, who said to me, hey, Dave, you know, we saw that thing they left by our mailbox, and you know what, we got together with our neighbors, and you know, we know you, and we, we've known you for 30 years, and we know, you know what, that's not the way to treat you. And people don't like, people don't like when people that they support and believe in, when someone else attacks them negatively. Well, in, in Yorktown is, I, I think is, you know, everybody talks about we want our people to run on the issues. We don't want negative campaigning. But most of the surrounding areas love to wallow in the mud. And it works. But in Yorktown, when you have a negative attack, it usually bounces back on the sender, not on the receiver. Yeah. What makes Yorktown different, do you think? I think I, I'm... I love Yorktown. So well, I mean, that's I've thing. dedicated my entire life to the residents of I'm not of asking you to come in on the other towns. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I don't want to denigrate the other towns by saying this, but... Just to just push the snow on their streets. Right. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Um, I think we have a very educated electorate. I think that Yorktown voters are very informed. You know, they, they know the issues. They know who they believe in. They know who they want to support. And I, I like I said before, I think that when... When somebody attacks someone that you care care for, I mean, I'm not saying that you care about so much that everyone cares about me, but the people that, you know, you got, I that that support me, 
are, are they get insulted you got when to admit do that. you've gone door to door and you know how they felt about Terrence and Vishnu yep. and Nick and Mike. Yes. It is a familial thing. Absolutely. You say? Absolutely. There On is a local level, I, I firmly believe that if I had the ability and the time to get to every single door in Yorktown, and I think that's what makes certain people successful, that if I had the ability to spend 15 minutes with every person in Yorktown, that I, w I truly would be unbeatable. You know? I mean, but the, the, what I'm saying is <laughs> but that was, I, this was, a, this was a sobering is, experience I mean, for me. But you got Terrence that could be found at his business. You yes. were able to be found at it, but you always answer the phone. Nick's claim to fame was that he answered yes. the phone. Yeah, and that, And Michael Grace is every, every time you turn around, he's somewhere. Yes. Do you think that familiar thing is because they do not remain hidden from the people? Absolutely. That there, you could find them? I had it. I had people say it to me when I was speaking to them about the position of highway superintendent, and they said that's a high-profile job, Dave, and you should be out there. You should be at board meetings. You should be there, and you know. Well, that was another thing in Eric's favor. He always answered the phone. Right. You know. And and Eric was at board meetings, but you know what? People didn't realize it because he was standing in the back. He would come forward if you know people had a question. But he was he there was there, but it. people didn't realize he was there. I so, thought they did. I just no, did. not when I was walking around there. Okay. Nope. People said it. You know, that he never goes to a meeting. I said, that's not true. He does go to meetings. You just don't see him because he's not sitting up there on the dais, you know, with us, you know. But I think that, you know, I, my but I'm personal belief is that... But I'm answering the phone that, 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 that con, because you go to a lot of these places, you never see these people unless it's a board meeting or unless they're running for office. You try to call them. Yeah. And it's, you know, you've got to talk to the secretary. I'll make it up. Oh, they're busy now. And you don't really get that in Yorktown. Yeah. I had sent out 10,700 letters. Letters. I didn't do mailers. I didn't do robocalls. I sent one letter to every household in Yorktown. First page, saying what my thoughts were. Second page, saying what my experience was, saying what my endorsements were. Okay? That's it. I had the, over the, and you know, you would think 10,700, and I put my personal cell phone on there. Yeah, I, had, I saw that. I had over 15 phone calls. I used calls. to think I was special. Yeah, I, I had over I want 15 my own phone number from calls now on. from people who called me up and said, I got your letter and here's my concern. And, I, you know, we were out, you know, visiting people and my wife would jump out or Ian would jump out and I would say, um, you know, I, I have to speak to this person. I would speak to them for 15 minutes about what their concerns were, what their particular experiences were and what their problems were. And, that you know was what? another thing I always ask you. Everyone you asked me if it was a burner phone. They said, is this a burner phone? I'm like, what am I, on CSI? No, but what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying is that one thing we talk about, every time you'd call me going nutsy cuckoo and all this, and I'd say, but what are the people asking you when you go to the door? Are they asking you about this or are they asking you about their streets? Right. You know, yeah, it, it was focusing. Yo, this you, was an interesting election. I mean, I think it would have been different if you were running for council. We would have had to, it would have had to be a whole different race. If I was running for council, I would have been much more secure. I would have been more secure in my but debates. But it still would, would have been, been a more, different race. Yes, but I would have been, you know, I, I believe I'm a good learner. I believe I'm a fast learner. And I believe that neither you, myself nor any of my opponents in this particular one race of the things I wrote brought about. in exactly one what was necessary had, to fill Eric's I shoes. I said one of the things I wrote about it was no knock on Diana. I looked at his resume and I said, this is a great foreman. He's the guy you want to assign the task to. But the guy that creates the task, that's an executive. Yeah. That's a different thing. And, I, and you need, and you needed this in your business, how to think on the fly and not to be afraid of being wrong. Oh, yeah. That is something that takes, what, a lifetime, 30 years it's, to build up that security to right. say, this it's, is what I'm... It's in you. It's innate. It becomes innate. You know, you can't learn it. That you can't learn. You can't learn the ability to be confident to make decisions and live with them. You know, even on the town board. I mean, if, I, if there's people have said, my own people that help me have said, you don't speak up enough. And I'm like, I don't speak unless I have something to say. Well, and I'm, if I don't know the answer, I... Find out the answer before I'm going to speak. But that I'm not was going one to just the, blather out well, something Well, when you ran else. for the council, that's what you said. If I don't know what I'm told, I'm not going to say anything. I just said to say. that with Highway, too. I'm not going to, you know, I don't live in a vacuum. I don't make decisions in a box. And you, I, you, and you acknowledge that there are people smarter than you that might have a better oh, idea. Oh, yeah. I mean, I saw you do that in your restaurant. You had your as chief of, uh, your wait, chief of waiters. He may have had a better idea to do a party. No question. When I, when we, before we would, you know, not that this is a restaurant show, but before we do a, hit the holiday season, which would be Thanksgiving, Christmas, 
um, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. I'd sit down with the staff and I'd say, what are we, what are we short on? What do we need? Do we need butter plates? Do we need that? And, and, you know, people laugh at me and they say, oh, you know, a highway's not like that. You Actually, know, I it said, is. I said, but the mentality you know, if, is. If you, if you sit down with your men and your ladies, your women every day and you say, hey, you know what, or once a week and you say, okay, what do we need? What, what you know, budget time's coming up. What do you, you guys are out in the field. What do we need? My job is to give you the tools to do it right. My job is to allocate the manpower. My job is to promote a sense of unity. What did My I, not, what did job I is not your, to be, divide and conquer. What did, what did I write? Your job is not to drive the backhoe, but to make sure there was a backhoe. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the fact. You know, I said that in a debate. I said, if we don't have the money, you know, you better be able to fix the truck because there's not going to be anyone but there to do it. But part of this, and this I noticed when you were in the, and I wrote about this too, and I think my column helped you a lot. I mean, you told me I could get to blow my horn on yes, this Yes, I think your column was instrumental, particularly in my race, because, and this is, you know, I'm certainly, you know, I, I hate when you get a big head, but the fact is. But it's too late for me. Yes, but the, the <laughs> fact, yeah, yeah, you're a self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> the, fa the fact is, in this particular race, there was no incumbent. There were two, three actually candidates right. who, you know, kissed initially six, whittled down to three, who came into this that all had very diverse backgrounds, diverse, you know, I hate to use the word because it's been beaten to death, but diverse skill sets. And it was, you they know, had, as I was what visiting. I write, when I wrote the prime, they each had a talent they brought right. to the table. And they as had, I was visiting homes, and I, I went to a lot of homes, and I was visiting homes, you know, people said, you know what, Dave, I get it. It's a management job, you know, and you have the management experience, you know, it's... But it's not being afraid of you. I said, my father told me first-rate people hire first-rate people, second-rate people hire third-rate people because they're insecure. Right. I saw in your restaurant, you were never afraid to have people smarter than you and hire people smarter than you. I'm not afraid on the town board. You know what, if I have a question, I have friends who have been very supportive of me. One of my friends was on the planning board for 18 years. Do I well, pretend, I know I you leaned on him a lot. I do, know right. do I pretend to know more than him? He was 18 years, for uh, countless years, he was chairman of the planning board, and he's one of my best friends. And if I have an issue that is with respect to planning, I call up our head of the planning department, and then I call my, my bellwether, and I say, what do you think? 18 years you went through this. You know, What's your opinion? Now, we talked about uh, one other before I get off of Yorktown. How did Michael Grace win? How did he get Democrats to vote Republican? Because he only had one line. Mike, there was no other safe haven. He did it last time. He yeah, won on one line. There were three people on, in right. that he race. He won on one line last time. There was time. three people on that yes. race. And you know what? M Michael had a record to stand on. You know what? And, and clearly his message resonated. You know, and it was our board, you know, well, you it were was, part of that message as right, a councilman. We, you want right. to wear the council it was, hat. It was our board, you know, that, that did get the dog park done. It was our board, you know, that, you know, helped with the Holiday of Lights parade. It was our board that tries to, you know, and our board, all of us, not me, Michael, Terrence, no, because me, it has to Michael, be a majority. Terrence, Nick, Vishnu. I said it has to be a majority to get were, this through. That you, that, 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 Pete, you think, so you think that the, 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 the people in Yorktown were saying, we, we, we want at least some commercial development now in Utah. We want to utilize yeah. these last properties. Yeah, we have X amount of commercial space left. People want, you know what, it's, it's, it's a clear, I mean, concise message. I had somebody call me up. There was a project proposed for Route 202 that included 132 housing units in addition to some retail. I said, absolutely not. I said, you cannot count on my vote on that. And they're like, well, what do you mean? I said, you cannot count on that because... I am not in favor of putting any residential development in commercial areas. You want to put your 130 houses somewhere else, that's fine, but not in a commercial area. There's limited space. 202 is a commercial corridor. And yep. you know what? With all due respect to everyone, you know what? We've got a bunch of empty stores there. We need to get them filled. We need to develop what's there. We need to get, you know, in, in the Staples Shopping Center, we got a big empty store. You know what? If, People clearly saw the message that, you know, what happened was, I think also, is that the wheels of, of government move much more slowly than the wheels in private right. sector. You know, people don't realize that. They're like, well, why didn't you just, you know, 
do this, and why didn't you, why is Costco not in yet? Well, you know what? It's not like we could just wave the magic wand and Costco's here. It's not we, 1960. It's not like that. So you know what? When big projects come before us, we have to follow protocol. You know, no matter how much we feel about it, people have a right to weigh in on it. You know, that's, that's the fact. It's, now, I want to get out for this a minute. Somers, Republican sweep except for Kaplowitz, the only Democrat. And he creamed the Republican opponent. Yes. Why? Mike Kapowitz, in this particular election, Michael, you know, during the budgeting process, reached across the aisle to the point where they turned the lights out on him. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, mean that really, be, you got to be kidding that was me. Front I mean, that was like, that was, you know, that was high school. Well, you know, that's like stealing signs. You know, yeah. that's, you know that's right up there. Um, but Michael reached across the aisle and he did what was right. And you know what? And that's the way it should be on a local level. You know what? We're not... We're not making decisions. You know, I've run on both sides of the aisle. And you know what? We're not making decisions on issues that are altruistically party identified. You know, it's about doing the right thing for the resident. When somebody calls me up and says, oh, this resident has a problem, can you go and see them? I don't ask, are they a Democrat? Are they a Republican? Are they conservative? Are they working families? I just go. I just go there. I, I, when I'm going door to door, I don't even carry a list. I go door to door. My message is the same. Whether I'm, I don't know who I'm meeting. I don't know if I'm meeting a conservative, a Democrat, a Republican. It doesn't matter to me. The message is the message. I don't have a different message for different people. So you're saying here and now for everybody to know that you'll even plow Democrat streets. Absolutely. I just want to make that. Yes, clear. I think that would be a, <laughs> a pretty safe assumption. Astorino. Yes. Two to one. Democrat to Republican in Westchester County. Yep. Heavy Democrat yeah. down county. Heavy below 287. Yeah. Needed to be very strong in the north. And, and he was. What, what, what is, I mean, because you saw all those uh, Branson signs. He had a good ground game. He had a ground game. And everybody thought that Astorino's win against Spano was because of Spano fatigue, not yeah. for anything Astorino. So do you think maybe this validated that it wasn't Spano fatigue with Astorino, that actually that the residents of Westchester buy into his message? Yes, Rob's a good guy. You know, I don't know him we don't hang out, but, you know, he's always been a gentleman. He's a, a very civilized person. And you know what? At the end of the day, uh, you know, I thought, you know, I, it, with a two-to-one margin, it's, that's hard to overcome. I mean, we've seen various people switch parties because they didn't want to continue to fight that battle. You know, people on yeah. the county level. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, including the district attorney, you know, who, who I, I think is one of the greatest people in the world. You know, but... It, she started as a Republican. Yes. But you know what? Why fight that fight every time? You know, because really, so her, her job is not about po politics. Talking like about, highway, so it's that's not about saying, politics. Talking about the fight in, and we can, we're only going to talk about here, not nationwide, not other states. Branson concentrated his attack on Astorino as a Tea Partier. Oh, yeah. who was going to outlaw abortion right. and give guns to criminals. Right. Do you think Criminally that, insane, too. Criminally yes, insane, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's so, nice. So, now, now, so when you look at these voting results, do you think that, and in your town, here were these signs, Astorino, Tea Party Republican. I would have fired the guy that said, that's yeah. going to work in your town. Yeah. yeah. In Yorktown, at first I thought they were actually Rob signs. You know, I mean, honestly, right. I mean, Yorktown, you know, the Republicans in Yorktown are are very loyal. They're very, you know, dedicated to getting the vote out They're, You know, they they just they're believers in their thing. So I would tend to think that for 60 percent of the Republicans in Yorktown, the Tea Party signs wouldn't have been wouldn't hurt, have been a detriment. But do you think it hurt Branson not talking about economic issues, yes. that the social issues was not what people in Westchester were really concerned about? I think. Just like I think local politics, county politics, national politics, I think when you do a hit piece on a person like they did to Astorino with a person holding an AK-47 and, you know, saying that he was going to put guns in children's hands and stuff, you know what, that's a hit piece. Yeah. It may be a commercial, but it's a hit piece. And I think, you know, when Rob's wife came out, and, you know, on a commercial and said, you know what, cut the bow, let's talk about the issues. My husband's not going to put guns in the hands of kids. He's not going to, you know, 
all these boogaboos that get raised. And, and you said it. You said it in your, one of your first columns. You said that when, when people run scared, all of a sudden you go from, <clears throat> there were steps. I don't remember I exactly. The one first was, one is they talk <clears throat> about the issues. Right. The second one is they talk about it when they're really you. nervous. Then they talk about yeah, you. They, and the third step when your, they your, feel... Your family. Your family. Your kids ugly. are ugly. Right. You know, your wife's hideous. Yeah, you know. yeah, 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 right. Yeah, and yeah. I think that holds true. I think people are tired of that. People are fighting. They're suffering. People are working two jobs to make ends meet. I, I struggled. You know what? I struggled. I had a business. You know what? I, I left a lot of money there. It, you know, it was all based on sound financial principles until the economy tanked. And a lot of people are in that position, and they don't the like to see people The last column I wrote before the election called "Crown Jewels of Bl <clears throat> Blithering Ignorance," and there's because I was so mad at these commercials. Astorino's going to outlaw abortion. Fifty years of Supreme Court rulings. Where does the county executive yeah. have that power? Yeah. No, it, he doesn't, and that's and that's and why people responded the way they because did. Because I'm saying that they're worried about getting a good education for their kid. Yep. They're worried about having taxes. a job, <clears throat> yep. so they could pay their taxes. Yep. And they're not. I don't think you know. You know, we're going to let you screw with your heart's content because we're going to give you a free condom. Right. Really, was the issue no. that was going to drive this it race? Wasn't. It wasn't. But I, you know, and I'm saying to myself. Well, if he's diverting from the economic issues, it has to be because he has no economic plan other right. than raise taxes, well, which is not going to play look, well above 287. Right. Look what, look what happened in the Rochelle. And, you right. know, people, you run in your record, you know. I mean, at some point, you know, you can be a soundbite, but at some point you have to have some substance. You know, you have to have some moral compass. You have to have some, something that people say is consistent about you. I think you know? that's why Testa cleaned uh, uh, the, uh, Dwayne Jackson's clock. Even though he was a hero, you can't take that away from him no. and all this. But there's Dwayne Jackson going around saying, I'm going to raise your taxes so we can give it to more people below 287. That's not going to work up here. That's not no. the race you run <clears throat> up here. No. Yo, that would have been good if he was running below 287. Right. But it's certainly not the race to run up here, which Mike, you were talking about Michael Kaplan. He represented his district in spite of it. And you knew. And Michael's the smart, always the smartest guy in the room. Right. But he paid yeah. a heavy price. Oxman sent out a nasty letter about Mike when he yeah. went against the board on, on, on that to, to, to form that coalition. Uh, you think they'll still be forming coalitions in this election? Or do you think it was so nasty that uh, it's going to be tough? I think that if, if you're a politician and you're the kind of person that does that, you know, whomever you are, I think that that's inherent in you and I don't think it changes. Okay, we're winding down the show. Dave. Well, I was, you know, it's good because I said to you when we just started, what are we going to talk about? And you said, just follow my lead. We never have a problem talking no, about anything. I, so. I'm happy you won. Me too. I, uh, <laughs> and I'd I'm like very, I want to say to everyone, I'm very grateful for the support. It, um, you know, I will... I will be a dedicated, you know, I said it when I ran, I want to put the service back in public servant. You know, I hope to, to do new and innovative things on the, in the highway department and, you know, have constituents feel comfortable to come there and ex express their feelings and what they'd like to get what done. What was and the last thing I said to you on the phone last night before we started? Don't screw up. Yeah, no, no, I, I will. Mean, Let me tell you, I'm, I, I may not know everything, people put but their, I know I don't know everything. People you know? put their faith in you yeah. not to win every battle, right? but, but we, to be there for every battle. You know what? I'm blessed. I'm walking into a good situation. You know what? Those, the, those You're going to walk are, into a well-oiled machine. Yes, I mean, the, you those, can, those people in highway are hardworking. They know what they're doing. You know what? I've spoken to quite a few of them, and you know what? It's just, it's just a matter of, of managing. That's all. I don't need to get out there. They you're know what they know what they need to do. In other words, you're not going to go there to reinvent the wheel. No, but I will. I will. I will make it more user friendly for sure. No, well, that's different. I said, but we're not going right. to tear it down to build it up in your image. You're oh good. no! These what people, do I care? These They've people. been doing their job for the last 16 years. That's a, you know. I mean, uh, do I presume to go in there and know more than Eric? I mean, like I said, you know, it, no. it's the same thing with your friend on, that was on the planning board. Do you presume to know what a guy that did right. it for 18 years? Right? Nope. Anyway, congratulations, Dave. Thank, Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. You still got a budget fight to fight? Yes, today. I have a budget fight.